Oh my gosh, long time coming. First and foremost, you guys and girls, welcome to Health Talk Radio. I am here as your host with my co-host, Paul Burgess. And let me just say, this has been a long time coming. I am super stoked, super excited. Our first episode is going to be called How to Reinvent Yourself, but don't let the title fool you because over the weeks, as we progress, as we build this channel, we are going to talk everything health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, nutrition, training, optimization, everything and then some. You guys are going to get everything you need right here on Health Talk Radio. For those of you that don't know who I am, I am a best-selling author and influencer. I've got a couple of certifications, but I don't know even close to what my co-host knows, Mr. Paul Burgess. Mr. Paul Burgess, long time coming, friend. How you doing? Mate, I am awesome, and I'm stoked that we actually got to, to actually do this thing. I think the thing that took the longest was thinking of a name for the show. Never yeah. mind anything else. Guilty. It's crazy. Yeah, and you know, up until like three days ago, I didn't have a name. I searched Health Talk Radio. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is cool. It's general, but it allows us to to really talk about health in a multitude of ways. And then I send it to you and you're like, yeah, let's do it. We checked and it's available and now we rock. Simple, simple ideas always work, man. And so it's great to be here. And also, I mean, I'm really excited to get out a message that I've been talking about for you know, decades. And um, to my audience on my show, which is 180, 190 episodes or something, been going since 2014, when people, not everyone had podcasts back then. And, and I am very excited to get to a different audience because, you know, at the end of the day, we want to get our message out to as many people as we can, because it's all about helping them and getting them to improve their life in whatever capacity it is. And, and one of the struggles we have is getting lost in all the noise that's out there. And so getting getting into a new audience is really exciting for me. And, and it is noisy every single day. Some new cutting edge supplement experience protocol is coming out. Before we get into this, Paul, you're a clinical nutritionist out of the UK. Uh, you have extensive knowledge in all things health optimization. Um, really quickly, what is one thing that you're working on, whether that's the, the way that you guys do blood work and analyze blood work, what is the one cutting edge thing that you're working on with your team that you're super excited about? <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. We've got some amazing testing that we can go really deep into cellular function and toxicity, mold, um, the things that cause things like MS, Alzheimer's, dementia, that kind of thing, um, things that people aren't aware of, the chemical toxicity in the in the sofa that you sit in or the shampoo that you wow. use or the, all that kind of stuff. And when we, when we find out, you know, that kind of thing, it's really exciting. But people ask me, what do I do? Because it is quite complex. <clears throat> and I've managed to, I think, simplify it. Let's hear it. So basically, we give back people the capacity to live a happy, healthy life, which is fulfilling with all their goals and everything else by dealing with all of their health issues mm -hmm. and cutting through all the confusion they've got when it comes to what's the best diet for me? Should I be taking supplementation? How do I get my sleep right? What, mm -hmm. what, you know, why am I fatigued all the time? What's the thing I need to do for my creativity and my um, passion and getting myself back into a creative environment. You know, all of these things that people focus on every day mm. and there's millions of things suggested to them on online. They're so confusing and, and it's so opposite. Some of them, some people say, if you don't eat just meat, then you're clearly going to die. If you ever eat a plant and right. the other end of it is like, well, you've got to be vegan. Otherwise anything else will give you cancer. And it's just like, yes. Oh my God. Know, this stuff is so, so, so polar opposite. And so we basically cut through all that confusion and make sure that each individual patient has got the exact knowledge they need to get the capacity back to live this happy, fulfilling life. And yeah. it works time and time again. It's insane. And so the people that come to me are the ones that say, you know, I've been to the doctor, I've been to the specialist, been to the consultant, and they're telling me there's yes. nothing wrong. It's all in yep. my head. And you go, right. well, now we can actually do some proper work with you. Now you've got away from some of the people that aren't actually doing the right thing. 
Yeah, one more thing too before we we get into the the topic for today: how to reinvent yourself. Um, you're working with my mother. You're working. You're you're working with Amanda, my my significant other, my my beautiful significant other. I've sent best friends to you. You've changed my life, and so people need to understand. And I was telling Gordon and Scotty this before we we started this podcast when they asked you like, "Who's Paul Burgess?" I said, "Paul Burgess is the one person on this planet." That if there is a health challenge going on in my life or in somebody's uh, life that's close to me that I love, I say, call Paul Burgess, period. End of story. There is no one else. It's you, my friend. And you've earned that by continually um, learning, growing, making progress, and ultimately just doing things in this space that are cutting edge uh, that nobody else is doing. Well, I mean, I I massively, massively appreciate those comments because- it shows that I'm doing something right. And everyone, including me, we have our own self-doubts about what we do, right? We go, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it as well as I could do? What else do I need to learn? And all that kind of thing. But I do get people mention those things like you just said quite often. And that just reconfirms that what I'm doing is the right thing. So I'm blessed to know that I'm helping your family that way. And, you yep. know, we see huge results in people that um, have tried everything. Oh, my mom is, my mom is thriving at 62 or 63 years old. I mean, thriving better than she's ever been before. The way that you have her dialed on her nutrition. And now Amanda, like, I, I love you. You're a brother to me. I'm grateful for you. And I know as I age and certain things happen and challenges come in. Hey, Paul, I got something going on. What do you think? Here's the thing. We're not, it's not about waiting till the bits start dropping off or not working properly. It's about knowing mm -hmm. how to prevent that stuff. Because a lot of people say, oh, you know, you've got to do all these biohacks and you've got to, you know, eat only this and do only that and cold plunge and cold shower and, uh, and all this kind of stuff. And that's all lovely. But what they don't understand is that's reactive stuff. And that's also trying to as it says in the title biohack it's trying to hack a system to improve something what mm -hmm. they're not aware of is you have a high load chemical toxicity that none of that is going to change mm, and yep. whilst that toxicity is there and it's been there for 10 years your mitochondrial function is going to get worse your energy is going to get worse your memory is not going to come back your brain function is going to be impaired everything about the creativity in your life is going to go because these things, the toxicity, the mold, the heavy metal toxic, whatever it is that's sitting in your system, that has been there for ages. No one's addressing it. And so very mm -hmm. quickly on that point, you know, currently in the world, it's 2022 now we're the most advanced we've ever been apparently. And yet one in two people will get cancer in their lifetime. Crazy. Statistically, statistically, it means one of us are going to get it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be me though, bro. I'm just saying, just saying. <laughs> I'm going to be in the metaverse. You can't get cancer in the metaverse. I'm just kidding. I'm just... And, and, and do you know what? That positivity is a great thing. Yep. Yep. What people don't realize is there's a huge correlation between mold, toxicity, mold infection, and cancer. There's a huge correlation between environmental and chemical toxicity in your system mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cancer. And so if you've got two types of mold in you and three chemical toxicities that you've had for many years, the chances are stacked in the favor that you're going to get some sort of cancer. Now we can get rid of that. Now we can take six months to a year to completely refurbish everything, get everything out and give you like 90% better chance of not getting that kind of disease. It. Yep. But people don't do that way. Right? They go, let's wait for something to go wrong. And they go, oh, why am I so tired? Mm -hmm. And so, and then that's not even touching on things like Lyme disease or viral infections or any, things like that that are with you for life. Mm -hmm. that people don't understand how to manage. So the prevention stuff is all there is because there is yep. no cure yep. for cancer. But right? you can treat it, but you've got to remember you're treating the symptom. You're treating cancer. You're not treating the cause of it. Right, and right. So, you can't treat Alzheimer's. There's no cure for Alzheimer's, no cure for dementia. When you've got cardiovascular disease, if you've had a heart attack, part of your heart has died. 
Mm-hmm. So this stuff cannot be treated then. It has to be prevented. And that's where we get so much um, traction in our patients because we, we change things significantly in them. And then imagine if you're not worrying about those things, how much more capacity you have to know. Oh like- my gosh, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you're not healthy, even if you get a sniffle or you get a cold, right? The first thing, the only thing you're thinking about is how do I get rid of this thing? How do I get better? You know? And so I love that. I can't wait in, in uh, later episodes. I can't wait to, to dig into that. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about this one, how to reinvent yourself. I, I know we're starting, we're starting slow. And I, and I think it's a really great, we talked about this particular topic at length a week ago. And I'm in this period of life. I just turned 40 uh, in November. And so I'm in this period of, of my life where I'm sort of reinventing myself as well. Um, so let's talk about that, how to reinvent yourself. But first, Paul, in your mind, what does it mean? What does it actually mean for the listeners to reinvent yourself? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, everyone's individual, right? And everyone has yep. their own, yep. their own unique take on what's important to themselves in life and in, you know, their, their goals and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think many people focus what's on what, what I would call the thin end of the wedge. <clears throat> so let me give you a quick story, if I may. Yeah. A, a friend of mine come to me. I don't do any work with him, just someone I know, I've known him for a long time. He's, um, he's a policeman. He's a traffic officer. So he, he works night shift and day shift, and it's all a bit messed up. And so he contacts me and says, hi, Paul, listen, have you got a good protein powder you could recommend? And I went, Okay, what for? And so, well, recovery, because, you know, I want to recover and I'm buying one at the moment, which is fine. It's just a little bit expensive. And I'm just seeing if there's different alternatives out there. I said, well, recovery from what? He said, well, from training and things. Okay, well, what's your training like? And he said, well, I've got a Peloton bike and I'll do four days a week on that. And then I'll do three weight training sessions at the gym. So seven seven sessions. How old is this, How old is this, is this he, guy? He's 39. Okay. okay. And so... And he's been training a long time. I've known him a long time. He's always keeps himself pretty fit and stuff. I said, and so he, he gave me that scenario. Here's all my training, protein powder recovery. And I said to him, okay, how's your sleep? And he said, oh, shocking. I said, well, okay, how much roughly a night do you get? And he said, well, on a, on a good night, I'll get five hours. Oof. So you know that if someone tells you on a good night, I get that. That's that's never right. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like three and a half to four hours. Right? <laughs> yeah, with uh, yeah, with you know, we, you get up in the middle of the night too. On top of it, oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so I said to him, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to not worry about protein, and you need to worry about sleep, and that's get that fixed. Get a few more naps in the daytime. You know, you're not going to change your job necessarily, but you've got to work out where you can get some some thing in. And I'm, and I'm paraphrasing this, so I'm skipping through a few things because I want to get to a point. And so he said, okay, fine, I'll do that, blah, blah, blah. And he said, what about diet? Do you know, if I, and I said, oh, the other thing you should do, dial back your training. You're, you're way overtrained. Mm-hmm. I was going to say I was going to say that too. I, I, that's a little excessive. So he said, oh, yeah, but won't I get fat? And I said, well, to be honest with you, overtraining will make you fat because high cortisol levels are going to push up belly fat and you're never going to lose it and you're always going to be adrenally fatigued and you know all these other things that will happen mm-hmm. but um but what will happen is if you dial back your training obviously you'll recover more and uh-huh. um and you won't and, and you can manage your um your your weight gain that you think you're going to get on the basis that you're going to eat better and i gave him um some advice about a, a nutritional protocol to follow which we're not going to talk about today because i'm going to I'm going to launch that later in the series because I, it's something I've created personally and I think it's phenomenal and it will it will kick everyone's... I'm excited. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. I'm oh, excited. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But So I gave him this protocol and so in the morning I said, look, you you know, stop eating the, the carbs in the morning and maybe have some protein and, and whatnot. And he said, oh, what about eggs? I said, yeah, eggs are fine. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, okay, I get it. Okay, good. He says, okay, fine. Right. <clears throat> How many eggs should I eat then, do you think? And I said to him, the question you should be asking me is how do I improve my sleep? And the purpose of that whole story is people focus on the thin end of the wedge. Right? Yeah. How many eggs yeah. should I eat? What's the, what's the pre-workout I need to have? 
What's the, the thing that's going to fix me? And they don't focus on the thick end of the wedge, which is get the basics right. Get your sleep, manage your stress, get your diet in check, make sure you're hydrated, make sure you get some exercise. Those things are the things you need to focus on. Now, everyone knows that, right? But, but they're still focusing on the eggs. They're still focusing on the thin end of the wedge. Yep. Well, that's why people are reaching for the, for the fat burner or, you know, like, right, it's, it's how can I... How can I get results now as fast as possible with the least amount of work? Now, in his case, he's doing a ton of work, but I'm sure sleep is is the most challenging thing for him because of stress, work, lifestyle, whatever it may be. And so he wants to address this a different way, which is the easier way. Now, really quickly, and I know you got more to say here, would you say that if there is one most important thing in this, call it healthy uh, uh, framework, is it sleep? 100% that's where you need to focus all of your efforts, all of your energy. Sleep first. Yep. Yep. Sounds like we got to do a podcast just on sleep to talk about it because. But this, this stuff has been done to death, right? This right. is not, you know, sleep became very popular to talk about in the, in the higher echelons of, of health about five or six years ago, it became quite a thing and it's filtered down into like, everyone's talking about sleep now. And, and yes, you need it 1 million percent. People don't realize still how much you need it. It's like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, you will. Oh, yeah. And, and you'll be dead a lot sooner. You'll be yeah. dead a lot sooner without the sleep, right? Awesome. So you'll save some time and get more done potentially because you'll sleep less, but you're shaving years off your life. You won't, you won't get more done. Yeah, you're not affected exactly. when you're sleep deprived. No, I, you just, I know. You just go through the motions. Gary Vaynerchuk looks awful. What? I know. I love him. I, I love him so much, but man, you, you know, yeah, it's like, Listen, he might you just see the age, aging process, just, just Absolutely. taking control of his life. He's yeah. your age. Yeah. He looks awful. Right. And I can tell you, are you trying to say, did you just give me, did you just inadvertently give me a compliment? Mate, just take it as you will. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, looking at myself. I'm like, Oh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> but, what but, but you know what it's like? You, I don't care. You know, and we'll probably get into this over over time. Money's not the goal. And this is where reinventing yourself is really important. So the first thing you people need to start thinking about is, in fact, we're, I'm going to do it on you. I've not done this on you before. So Let's this is it. going to be. Let's do and it. If you want to, All the listeners, listen up. And, and I'll, I'll tell you that like, if you want to edit this out afterwards, you can do. So no, no, we're not editing anything. Out. No, no, no. So we want to find a way in which we can make changes to our, our health, our longevity, what fulfills us, everything. Mm -hmm. But to do that, we need to take action. And so, you know, if I say to you, right, you've got to diet and, and reduce your calories and you've got to do this exercise more, which, I'll, by the way, I think is a bad prescription. Less food and more exercise, I don't think works for a lot of people. Um, I, and, it's not sustainable. No, and, but there's reasons for, for why it doesn't work even worse mm -hmm. than that, but we'll talk about it. And um, so we want to get to, okay, what is the motivator that really gets people to take action, mm -hmm. right? So first thing is, Mike Morelli, what's mm -hmm. most important to you about your health? About my health? I would say cognitive function is probably number one for me, just because... I'm involved in so many different brands and so many different businesses, and then I have to be a dad. So I would say cognitive function is, is probably number one. Now, I want to be able to move freely as, as well. So I would say, you know, freedom of movement, cognitive function, energy. Okay. So being able to think well and have energy and be mobile. Mm -hmm. um, freedom. Those are the things that give me the freedom and the ability and the strength to take more efficient action. Why is it important to take more efficient action? Oh, here we go. It's more efficient to take efficient action or it's more important to take efficient action because for me, efficiency in the action that I take is going to allow me to be more productive, get more done and serve more people, um, serve my family in new capacities. I would say that that's probably the the summary. 
Why is it important to serve your your audience and your family? That's what makes me happy. That's what drives my happiness. It's it's serving people. It's helping people uh, uh, tap in and then break through their own challenges and then just getting those messages, seeing those pictures. I mean, I've got a hundred people in this challenge right now and I'm serving them every single day. Like I've never served in a challenge before. And I'm again, the happiest that I've ever been going back to when I was 31, 32, making videos in my basement, uh, in my mother's basement, the YouTube videos. Why is serving? What about serving other people makes you happy? Knowing that through my experiences and I, I don't have it all figured out. I, I I'm still going through pain and challenge, but, but knowing that going through the, the tough stuff and the pain and, and those experiences and transforming my body and my mind and my soul, um, knowing that I've done it and being able to use those gifts and that experience to do it for other people has just been very gratifying over time. What about doing it for other people makes you happy? <clears throat> what is that? What is that serving in you? And by the way, I do this with all my patients. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been through this exercise before. I, I you know, I, I th no, no, it's 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 great. Um, I, I know ultimately we're trying to get to the bottom, 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 bare bones answer, and there's always some stuff before we get there. I, I think ultimately, right? Like it's the validation that comes from serving other people and helping them break through. Exactly, and that and that is really important for mm -hmm. people to recognize within themselves because and I'll, and I'll and I'll save a lot of time here it's the same for everyone mm -hmm. right we mm -hmm. we all think we're not good enough yeah and so anything that gives us like you said validation or anything that shows us that we do have a value or we are good enough yes. because we we serve other people or we able to do this with that another that's the stuff that we focus on then that gets us to change ourselves and change our actions. And what I mean by that is your initial comment was good brain function. Okay, great. I can do that. Here's a, here's a formula that theoretically should make the brain work better. Off you go. That's not really going to sit well with you because you're still at the very thin end of the wedge. Mm. What, what would change you is to say, right, Mike, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with all of the issues that we need to, to make sure that you serve better than you've ever served ever in the history of your life. Right. And mm -hmm. we're going to do that by dealing with these health issues that you've got. We're going to deal with that toxicity, that mold, that, that viral infection, those bacterial infections that you've got. We're going to do the right type of dietary sub, um, protocol for you. We are going to use, very specific supplementation in the right order over time. And we're going to put together some sort of training program that allows that. But more importantly, I need you to stop training so much. And I need you to start looking at your sleep more, or I need you to start meditating more in a certain way and reducing stress. Now, when you talk to people about that kind of stuff and all they want is the thin end of the wedge, how many eggs do I need to eat? Mm -hmm. If it was for cognitive function, it will go in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. If it is for the validation that makes you that improve, you know, gives you the the feeling of I'm a I'm the best father I can be, and I mm -hmm. want to be able to be an example to my children, a warning to them. Mm, that's a good one. When you start dealing with it at that level, those changes are much easier to make, and they're mm -hmm. much more people are much more receptive to it. Right? Because you're not doing it for the for the top line thing, or I just want to be able to think better. You actually realize what you're really doing it for. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you understand that in yourself, you can then start going, do you know what? The car, the house, the watch, the things that are, all that kind of stuff means nothing to anybody. What really means something to me is being the best I can be so that I can give the best I can of myself to others. And that yeah, true brings back what this um yeah what about the people when you, you know you just mentioned cars and watches and and stuff which over the last two years i have sold all of my watches i sold my g-wagon i've sold most of my shoes i don't go and 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 do those things but at one point i did it was my identity 
And those things did give me a form of validation, right? You got a gold Rolex and you go up and you park valet and you get noticed and then you go to the the front desk of the nice hotel and, right, you put your arm purposely, intentionally on the counter so that they see your gold Rolex. There's validation in that. The wrong kind of validation, though, maybe. There's no validation of any kind in that. I, I think I think if you'd ask some people though that they would they would tell you like yeah because because they're thinking about it in the wrong way sure sure I would agree with that people who've got money do not post pictures of their watch or their car or their house real money more importantly forget yeah. the money people who are happy yes do not post pictures of their car their watch their house ooh. Amen. 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 If if yeah. if you were happy now, if you were yep. happy today, mm-hmm. the majority of your goals would cease to be important. Because a lot of these goals people are going for, they think that's what's going to give them their happiness when they get there. Oh, you are good, bro. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. So that Rolex yeah. that's sitting on the counter is doing nothing for anybody. You yep. think, look at my look, 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 look. Yeah, I made it. I got money, right? I made it, right? I must be important. That's not you're you're just trying to say to them, look how good I am, look how uh-huh. successful I am yep. in this material world. And a happy person would look at that and go, what? What, right. what? what about that makes you happy? So let me give you a personal story. In a past life, I was um a founder member of a very big financial institution in the city of London 30 years ago. And at that time, it was all about the watch, the car, the pen the house, the whole thing, right? <clears throat> and I had it all. I was driving a Bentley at the age of 28. No, sorry, I, I, I lie. I had a Porsche when I was 28. 26 was a Bentley when I was 29. I had all that kind of crap, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. All the watches, all that sort of jazz. And I was mm-hmm. the most stressed and unhappy I'd ever been in my life. Hated it. Mm-hmm. Today, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I have an amazing career with a company, you know, my company that is global, right? We're in God knows how many countries around the world, helping people like your family create, mm-hmm. a, a, you know, for, for someone in their 60s to go, my life is just starting. I'm, I'd love it. Ah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. what you want, right? Mm-hmm. I also happen to own a very nice car and a and very nice watch and a very nice this and a very nice that. But I didn't buy them for the validation of them because I I was already happy. Mm -hmm. So I bought things when I wanted them because I enjoyed the product. I don't get, I don't care what you think about it. It's not, it doesn't make no odds to me. I don't need to show it in your face. In fact, I'll pull my sleeve down. If I'm in, (coughs) in public, I'm not going to roll it up and put my, 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 my my arm on the counter because that's not what I'm about. It's not interesting to me. That stuff Mm -hmm. is so depressing because there's always going to be someone with a better watch and a better car and a better house and a better this and a better that, right? Not better looking, though. <laughs> this is the thing, right? This is the thing. that So many people are trying to validate themselves by their personal possessions. <coughs> Excuse me. By their possessions. And the happiness is never there. Right, right. They seek happiness through those things, only to realize that you're happy for a little a little bit of time, and then it always it, it wears off. It always wears off. I think we need to do we'll we'll do a podcast se- we'll do a separate podcast just on this because I think how know. happy are you when you've got that thing? Because immediately you get it, the fear is what happens if it all goes away. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Or if I scratch it, if I ding it, if I get something on my shoe, right? You're constantly walking around with a damn rag trying to wipe off your thousand dollar sneakers. And the biggest thing that you did, the biggest step you took in the right direction recently was to get rid of all that stuff. Yeah. I feel so. I, I, I'm not any less happy and I feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Because all that stress is gone. All that meaningless stuff is gone. Yeah. So it's really important that people realize that goal you're setting of, you know, I'm going to work 18 hours a day and I'm going to create all this this financial success <clears throat> is not going to bring you any sort of happiness. So as long as happiness is not in your goal plan, that's fine. If you just want to work yourself to death, and bear in mind, I deal with a lot of very wealthy, high net individuals who have got all the money in the world and none of the health or happiness. Mm-hmm. That's what you don't want. That's what you don't want. You don't want a ton of money and 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 terrible health like what would be the point what would be the point 
because my car is bigger than yours or my house is bigger than yours or whatever it is. Awesome. But the fact of the matter is they've been going down the wrong road mm -hmm. for many years. So they've been going down the road of, I just want good cognitive function. Give me my good cognitive function because I can continue going down this road. Right, right. But when people step back and they go, I'm just going to, I'm going to optimize myself in all the very smallest details so that I can then be the best person I can be to serve other people better. Mm -hmm. That's a different, that's a different road to go down. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to say on this about reinventing yourself, the last thing I'm going to say, always put yourself first. Amen. And the reason I say that is because until you put yourself first, you can't be the healthiest, most energized, most passionate, most creative, no. giving person. Not for anybody. Yeah. Is you put everyone else first. Yep. The kids come first. The wife comes first. The husband comes first. The work comes first. Oh, I've got to do this work. You know, it's, it's Sunday night and it's two o'clock in the morning. I still got to do it. So all that nonsense, all that does is create such problems within your own health and your own life that when you turn up to help those children or help that partner, whatever it is, you are just a disheveled, just wreck of yourself that is stressed, irritated and, and not creative in any way. And you turn up out of just obligation and you go, Mike, what do you want? Like, how can I help? I want to help you. How can I help you? And you go like, do you know what, Paul? Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. It's fine. Whereas if you put yourself first, you get your health right, you eat the best food that you can, you get your right sleep, you manage your stress, you do the, the minimum effective dose of exercise that you need and that you're, you're full of energy, you're full of passion and full of creativity and you turn up and go, Mike, right, I'm here. What can I do for you? What's the issue? And you go, look, this is happening. No problem, let's go. You're going to be so much more valuable yeah. to those yeah. people. Very good point, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people though, when they hear that, they feel it's hard for them, right? Because then they're like, well, if I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm selfish, aren't I? Aren't I selfish if I do that? No. Do you know what it is? You put yourself first, and that is a charitable thing to do because it means you're more useful for the other people. Agreed. Yeah. If you, if you put yourself last, that's being selfish because when you turn up, you're no good to anyone. No, you're a mess. Yeah, exactly. So you put yourself first and then you can give more of yourself in a much more creative and positive and constructive way. You're actually better for those that you care and love about or love. So yeah. how is that so, selfish? No, it's not. It's, it's not. charitable. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel the same way you do. I just know that there's listeners right now that are like, oh my gosh, I could never put myself before my kids and before my spouse and before my dog and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If they did, they'd realize that they would be better for those people in their life. Now, I've got three very questions. Quickly, Mike, very yeah. quickly, what's the knock-on effect of that? If they're better for those people, then they serve those people more. Oh, which absolutely. Gives them more happiness, uh -huh. and more uh -huh. validation. So actually, yeah. it's a it's a self fulfilling prophecy, which yeah. is, you know, it's a never ending circle of good things. Yeah. So I got three questions that I want to answer. We're about a half hour in. And we still really haven't answered the question, what does it mean to reinvent yourself? So if someone comes to you, and I think this is, you know, we could all, probably a lot of us have a, a different variation as to how we would answer this, right? Could mean a new job. It could mean taking your health serious. It, it, there's a number of things it could mean. I'm going to school to reinvent myself. And so what's your definition? If someone says, hey, I want to reinvent myself, right? In your in your mind, what does it mean to reinvent oneself? So the first thing is to find out what's most important to you. Mm -hmm. And that questioning process will bring you to the same answer for everyone. Mm -hmm. like, I'm not good enough. So mm -hmm. what has to happen for me to absolutely do the things that, make, that validate me in a positive way? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if it is I, I just need to help as many people in a certain area i want to be the best football coach there is because mm -hmm. that you know the more goals we get and the more the, the guys are fit and healthy that gives me my thing how do i do that well the first thing i need to do is and so mm -hmm. you reinvent what's most important right you don't reinvent yourself because yourself is still the same right i'm glad you said that and you, you find out what's most important and then you work towards that 
and mm-hmm. find out how do I improve this. So that's the North Star, right? What is important to you? What makes you feel validated? Right? Because at the end of the day, that's all. That's all. We want to feel loved. We want to feel a part of something bigger than ourselves, and we want to feel validated. Ask anybody the series of questions that you asked me, and and for those of you that are listening, go through that exercise. Right? I did this. Uh, I did that very same exercise at one of the retreats I did like three or four years ago for a few people. And you always, you know, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going because a lot of that stuff is surface. Okay, that's surface. Okay, yeah, that's cool, but that's not it. Okay, yeah, that's awesome, but that's not it. And then you get down to the real meat of it. And it's always the same, like you said. So when you are in the process of reinventing yourself, starting with your North Star, starting with the thing that makes you the happiest, right? That, that, that thing that just lights you up. And, and for some people, they haven't discovered that yet. So really quickly, before I go into the next question, how do people discover that? Because there's a lot of people that are depressed sitting on their couch right now listening to this or in their car going to a job that they hate. And they're like, man, I don't know what that is. How do I find that out? So firstly, take the intensity out of it and take a step back and relax. Mm -hmm. And just think and just go, okay, Mm -hmm. what resonates with me the most? What is it if I had the chance, the the ability to do anything? For nothing, for no money. Yeah, yeah. What really makes me happy? Like what what really validates me as a person? And it might not be the first, second, or third thing you think of. Right. But it's about really being honest with yourself and finding out, you know, what's the thing that I know just sits with me perfectly well. Yep. And, if, and whenever I do that thing, I just feel in tune with everything and I just feel great. And, and mm-hmm. that's the thing that, that really gives that thing to me. And so you'll find it in a lot of things, right? Actors, for example, want to be able to perform because they get that feedback of applause and it validates them in that thing. But mm-hmm. it's not the most important thing because they're, they're searching for that validation from... A, a bunch of strangers so it's still very top line yes what you need is the, valid, the validation from the people that matter mm-hmm. and then takes, and then yeah. and then you've got to be open to accepting it yeah like like that that you, you know what you just reminded me of too it's like what do people think about me what does my kids and family think about me what's more important and how are we aligning our day so that when we go home that our family adores us before anybody else, right? Because we put on a show and we want everybody to like us. Does your family love, appreciate, and validate you? And if not, check in with yourself and say, what am I missing in order to achieve this? Because I will say, there's nothing that feels better than, than getting love and validation from those you love most. Of course, because they're the important ones, right? Mm-hmm. But here's the next step. People can tell you that, oh, Mike, you're amazing. You you do so much, such a good work and you're in such good shape and you look so great and you've got this great message and, my God, you know, you changed my life and that. And for you to be able to accept that compliment is always difficult. Yes, yes. Especially if you feel unloved. You know, if you've got upbringing, we can go really deep into this and we won't hear, but there's a there's a podcast coming up where we explore this whole need for validation and need for approval because of what we didn't get as children. Because I've met very few people who have actually got everything that they needed from their parents, their teachers, their loved ones, their friends, more often than not. And I've worked with hundreds of people. They're lacking something from their childhood that they didn't get from their father, their mother, their brother. Almost always, though, I will say, it's the father who, it's the father who jacks shit up. Yeah. But but here's the thing, right? And and write it down that we're going to do that podcast. Make make a note of it so we okay. remember to do it. So going deep in childhood. So validation and our need for approval, validation, and ultimately to belong. And matter. Did I just hit it? Did I? Did I, I think I just hit a home run with that. That's a home run. That's a home run podcast episode. Yeah. What you've got to also realize, and and again, this comes as you know into validation in a big way is we we're all just making it up as we go along. Mm-hmm. You know, life. 
Yeah. We're just yeah. making up as we go along. There's no rule. Some book. of us would like to think we're in control, but but we're, we're, we're not as in control as we think we are. There's no rule book that says, right. Mike Morelli, at 40 years old, you now need to do this and that. And, right. and in, right. in January, you need to do that. And in February and in September, and this is what you need to follow. And everything is fine. Right. Mm-hmm. So what happens is we do the best that we think we should do based on our circumstances. And mm-hmm. we have definitely got a podcast lined up that talks about what influences us to be where we are. Oh, that's coming. What is that? Is that, I think that's, is that week two or week three we said? That's a it's, good it's one. on its way. Yeah. But, yeah. but here's the thing, right? And, and I'll probably repeat myself. So um, you'll you hear it a few times, but the um, we're making it up as we go along. And then we compare ourselves to other people get our validation. Guilty. And they're all they're also com- making up as they go along. Yeah, yeah. And comparing themselves to probably us. Like it's just right? it's this self-fulfilling prophecy that's never ever fulfilled. Correct. And when you compare yourself, you know, you're never gonna because they're gonna have some great things and also gonna be some stuff they suck at, and you're gonna yeah. be better at certain things, and it never really works. But then think back to your childhood, your parents, and all the rest of it. And I happen to know some of your background, right? So, and I'm not mm-hmm. going to discuss it here, but we will someday. We will. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that's yeah. fine. But but the fact of the matter is, they were also making it up as they go along. Mm-hmm. So they weren't intentionally behaving in a certain way or influencing in a certain way. They were trying that's to right. do the best yeah. they could with what they knew. Yep. But then, obviously, that is that comes onto us as children. As, a, as an influence in a certain way, and we then have yes. a lack of love or we have a lack of whatever. So we have to understand it's really critical that they were not doing it on purpose. Agreed. They were just doing the best they could, and it just didn't, it just wasn't great. Right. However, once you know that, you can then take some very good points from away from that and use it when you bring your own children up and yes. make sure that you make less of the mistakes, right? Yes. And I'm not saying either of us are perfect in our in our fathering, because <laughs> yeah. we're not, I'm sure. I'm... We, but we can recognize the things that we thought were shortfalls yeah. and try and make sure it doesn't happen that way. And one of the things, and, and we're getting a little bit off topic, but I do want to share it. One of the things, so I've got four children, eldest is 28, <laughs> the youngest is three and a half, nearly four. And... Um, the four-year-old genuine one that lives at home. <clears throat> and I, because I'm so much older now, I have a different view on life. And the thing I do with her every day, because this is so important when reinventing someone's, you know, psyche, is I say to her every day, what are the three things that made you happy today? Mm-hmm. You've got to list them out. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And the reason I, I do it. that, the reason I do it, is because I, I want her to get up every morning with the perspective that I'm looking for things that make me happy. Mm, so good. Because it's very easy otherwise, by default, right? We're just looking at every, every, everything that does the opposite and it just sucks our energy. What are the three things that made you happy today? You do that in the morning, you do that in the night. Does it matter when we do it? Well, well I, I, I do it with her in the evening because she's too young for yeah. me to say, right, when you get up today, you need to go and look for these good things. Yeah. Right. So it's good for her to think back and go, oh, yeah, that was nice and that was nice. And as she gets older, I'll transition that and say, okay, today, don't forget, you've got to find those three things. Mm-hmm. And, and so for me, my default when I wake up is I know today's going to be amazing. I'm going to do some mm-hmm. insanely incredible things today that are going to validate me massively. And I'm going to appreciate every one of them. I don't care if it's looking out the window that's in front of me behind the screen. And we've got, we're in just outside London, right? In the UK. We are not in the countryside. And yet there's a, there's a flock of green parrots with red faces that live in our garden. It's insane. Right. But when mm. they're all in flight and doing their thing, just that I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm, I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. Right? Or, <clears throat> or I get to speak to you today because I get to share this amazing message and I love this stuff or I'm open to whatever it is. So I'm looking for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, what you said was, was perfectly true in that most people are looking for the problems or they're just stuck in the, in the crap and they don't get the opportunity to even look at the good stuff. 
And so by bringing her up in that, with that default of you need to go out and look for the good stuff. You're teaching her to look at what's good and be grateful. You're trying to just yeah. uh, put her down that right path, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're doing the best we can. I'm sure there's other things I do badly. And so right. no doubt <laughs> we're, we're in 30 years, She'll be on a podcast yeah. to know how, how terrible her father is. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, but I, I was laughing as you were sharing that because all I could think about is my mom. I grew up on Fruity Pebbles. Everybody knows this, right? My poor mom. She didn't have the information. She didn't know. She would not raise me on Fruity Pebbles now because of what she knows. But I remember waking up and literally the, the two liter of, of, of milk, two liter, two gallon of milk was there and big metal bowl box of Fruity Pebbles, literally every morning, it was like a, a half a box or a box, which, uh, yeah, is, is different than we're doing. But again, right, we got the information. My mom didn't have the information. So that's just one example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the question was, but I, I said- Well, no, so, so, so just to kind of take us back as we finish this up in the next, you know, sort of t 10 minutes or so, we covered what it means to reinvent yourself. We've talked about the North Star and, and the thing that you need so that you can basically create a, a master plan for the direction of your life, health, wealth, mindset, emotional uh, intelligence, all of it. As we're reinventing ourselves and we're thinking about that, that North Star, that thing that really makes us happy and is going to give us the validation and the approval and the love and belongingness that we also crave and need... What else should we be focusing on in this process with regards to our health? I, you know, I say health, wealth, mindset, emotional intelligence, there's a lot of things, but since this is called Health Talk Radio, what are a couple of things right now on this podcast as people are figuring out themselves that we can share with regards to their health? Just some simple things. I'm going to start with one. If you do, I, I, Water. Right, get a bunch of water. I mean, like most of the time, we eat not because we're hungry, but because we're either bored, we're addicted, or we're we're dehydrated. Hydration is huge. So one of the things that we're doing inside this challenge group now is everybody starts. They wake up and instead of going for your coffee or whatever it is that you go for, have a big glass of water with either some shilajit or uh, Paul. What about like? you know, some uh, pink Himalayan salt in there? Would you advise that? Would you advise like Celtic sea salt? What would you advise for that early morning, call it tonic, to get our body hydrated and mineralized? Yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, suggest any sea salt of any kind, whether it's Celtic or Scottish or French or whatever, because there's a lot of microplastics in it nowadays. We're seeing it everywhere. It's just pointing to it. in you. Mind salt is fine. Pink Himalayan um, is one of them. Um, but also when you're looking at that kind of thing, you need to be aware that um, those minerals, the size of them, you know, from an atomic perspective, it, are they're massive and they tend, whilst they dissolve, they tend not to dissolve small enough. So we don't get it into ourselves as effectively as we can with other things that are now available to us. Um, so you can get what's called nanoparticle minerals in drops, put them in your water, and they will get into your cells because they're a tenth of the size of your cell. Nanoparticle minerals? Yeah, nanoparticle minerals. Cool. And so what we'll do, for those of you guys that are watching, we will, because this, this is going to be video form on YouTube. It's going to be audio form on all of your favorite uh, podcasting networks, iTunes, Spotify, uh, you know whatever else there is. My guys are so dialed. They'll have it everywhere. Um, and then the full version, the video version is going to be on my YouTube channel. And then we will link up the things that we talk about now and in the future, we will link up under each episode. So nanoparticle minerals, we will put that below. Yep. There's so something like this, for example. Right. So okay. this is called okay. upgraded formulas, upgraded okay. memory. This is a combination okay. of things that work really well. Okay. And, they will, and, 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 um, and what I'll do is I'll put a discount code. <clears throat> I'll get a discount code for them and you can put it in and, and, they, and people awesome. can get a discount if they want to go there. Right? What do you think about, really quickly, before you talk about the, the, nano, the nanoparticle minerals, what do you think of Shilajit? I, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. yeah, it's great. I think it's amazing, right? Useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I take it. I take it. I, I take it every day. I and it. I. I actually feel the difference from that. However, yeah. you're at the thin end of the wedge. Yeah. 
right? The thick end of the wedge, the reason you're feeling better is because it's temporarily improving something sure. in, that's being compromised by a bigger problem. Sure. And which can, you is just, be, can you just tell me, can you, can you just tell me for once I'm doing a good job, Paul? Say, you're hey, man. Doing a, you're, you're doing a great job. With the you, always, you, know, you, 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 you shoot me down, you, you, you know, build me up for once, man. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing a great job with the knowledge you have, which is minimal at best. So I know, I, I know. Worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And that's why I'm here. You know, for the people that are listening to, um, and you don't know this, Paul, but I'm actually doing this to get a PhD in health and wellness. You know, like part of this for me is learning things that I don't know. And like you said, I don't know a lot. I, I, know, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't know. I, I even tell people, I'm like, what Paul forgot I don't know what he forgot. I don't know, and so yeah, well, I forgot I'm here. I don't know either that's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here to learn. I'm, I'm here to. I'm here to. I'm here. You know, like all the things that you're saying. I'm going to go home. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to do them. You know. But all, 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 all kidding aside, um, when people take a supplement and it makes them feel better, it's because it's temporarily um, improving something that has a bigger problem going on, mm. and so Good point. we, Good we point. haven't. Yeah in your case, done any testing for a very long time. We got to so, do that. So, you know, it's very likely that you've, over 40 years, certainly with your lifestyle historically, you've probably mm -hmm. built up some toxicity, some um, mold, some other uh, viral infection, bacterial infection stuff. And whilst that is all going on, you know, these, the, the, the thin end of the wedge supplementation is not really going to work long term. It's always going to be a transient thing. So mushrooms work for you or, you know, this thing works for you or that thing. And, and that's all lovely. All of a sudden you're taking a huge amount of stuff just to get through a day, but we haven't dealt with what the real problem is. And, and that's where the difference in this functional medicine in the practice that I run and what we're going to do here, that's the difference. We're going to get people to understand fat end of the wedge stuff is where you need to look and the thin end, the, how many eggs do I need to eat or the, the or, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's not where it's, that's not where it's at. Yeah. And over time, we'll, we'll cover that more, I'm sure. Yeah. So as we wrap this up, I also want to let everybody know. So down below, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm also going to drop a link and I need to get you into my discord so you can see what we're doing. Um, I want to give people a place to start. I just redid my site, michaelmorelli.com. Um, and so we will be doing blogs and be putting information on there. And of course, these podcast episodes will be uh, transcribed, written, and on there for people who like to read. But I want to give people a starting place, Paul, because people are listening to this right now and they're probably like, okay, it's great. I need a North Star. I don't know how to find it. What can I do to get going? What can I do or what can I do to just get through the day? I'm stressed kids covid expenses have gone up inflation like so what tangible thing can we give our listeners right now before we go other than i'm going to drop my links to my private discord get you guys hooked up and in i've got a lot of free meal guides and things that you guys can have but paul and i are going to work together and we're going to put some materials together because because like in order for us to really be effective here paul we've got to give people tangible tools in order for them to do things in between episodes. Cause it's great. We can motivate people and inspire people for the hour that we're on every single week, but then what do they do? I think the first thing is to try and quiet the noise mm -hmm. and just relax, sit back and focus on the things that matter the most to you mm -hmm. because <clears throat> the job isn't the most important thing in the world the most important thing is happiness and what brings you the happiness. Mm -hmm. Most people are stuck in a job they don't like. Correct. Because they've got to pay the bills and they've got a house and they've got this and that and everything else. Yep. And it's very, very interesting that when somebody stops doing the thing they hate and starts doing the thing they love mm -hmm. as a, as a side effect, the income goes up about fivefold. Yes. I would and agree so, with that. And, and, and also, even if it doesn't go up fivefold, you are so much happier that it doesn't matter you don't have as much money because right. that 
perspective of being happy every day is what matters. I love it. At some point in the future, right? Oh, well, Today. Goal, then I'll be happy. Yeah, Screw no. that. Well, I'm not right. even a fan of setting goals. I've got to be honest with you. Because I'm a fan of how long, how am I going to be happy today? What can I focus on? What can I do? What a great message. How am I going to be happy today? What's going to make me happy today? Right? And, and, yeah. and that's where people start. Yeah. Because well, two things, happy people mm-hmm. tend to be healthier. And also yeah. happy people are much more creative and productive. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. So for those of you, have you ever read the book or listened to the book, The Untethered Soul? You ever do that one? All right. Amazing book. Amazing book. I think uh, author is Michael Singer. I'll link this up below as well, you guys. This is the first book that we're reading together in my Fit Discord. It's called The Untethered Soul. And the reason why I share that is because you just set a good starting place for people is to quiet the mind, focus on what's important, and drown out the noise. And this book that I've read now a handful of times has absolutely changed my life and has absolutely allowed me to do or helped me to do the thing that you just said, which is quiet the mind, quiet the noise, focus on what's important. Yeah. And and because what's the, what's the end goal we're after is being happy today. Yeah. Live a, a happy, fulfilling life. Yep. You know, so to be fulfilled, you need your validation. You need to be able to give to other people. You need to improve the world around you, whether it's in your household, in your street, in your borough, in your yep. country, whatever it is, you need to be able to improve all of that stuff because they're the things that give you this validation and this kind of feeling that I am worthy and I'm okay with this stuff. Yeah, It's not about how much money I've got what the possessions are, the house, the car, the watch, da, da, da. It's not about that. It's about the things that actually matter. Yeah, and, and I was fooled. Start, and, yeah, and you can start doing it now today. Yep. You just got to start taking that, that perspective slightly differently. Yeah, I'm going to finish with this. I was fooled, Paul. I was fooled because my dad didn't get the information. I was fooled. My dad, right? Money is power. Money is everything. Watches, cars, everything, right, was money, 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 money as being the most important thing. He's not the healthiest person in the world. He doesn't have great relationships with a lot of friends and family. He hasn't left a legacy. So he didn't have the information and he was trapped in that cycle. And for a while I was trapped in that cycle. I thought more stuff, more money, bigger bank account was the way to happiness only to get there and be fooled with still a gaping hole and a sense of lack. So for those people that are listening that think, right, that money is going to make you happy, I'm not saying that money doesn't give you freedoms and that it's not important, but it's not going to ultimately make you happy, like genuinely happy at your core. No, but this is this is what, this is, get, this is a bit back to front. Don't focus on attaining money. Focus on attaining happiness now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the money will come with that. Mm -hmm. And not only will you be happy, but you'll have the resources to help more people. Right? You're not gonna all of a sudden start buying all these all these toys and whatnot just because you've got more money. The first thing you will find you do, because it gives you more validation and makes you happier, is you'll help other people with it. I love it. And and then you you feel even better when you go to bed at night. What a productive day that was. Yeah, yeah. Like I love not, it. not I've got a thousand dollar pair of sneakers and I've had put them under the bed so the dog doesn't chew them up or whatever. Yeah, that's not so that's not cool. Awesome. Well, we will end there for the people that are still listening. Thank you so much for giving Paul and I some attention and time today. We hope that we gave you immense value, that you are taking notes, and that you're going to take this and apply it into your life because knowledge is awesome. But knowledge is in power, right? Applied knowledge through intention is what power truly is. If you're listening to this on iTunes or where you can leave a review, please, 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 as we get going, reviews are going to be really important to get this message out. The more reviews we have, the better we rank on some of these podcasting platforms. The faster our message gets out, the faster we grow. And please, 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 you guys, share this with somebody you love, somebody that needs the message Thank you so, so much. Whether you're watching this on iTunes or whether you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> I butchered that. Whether you're watching it on YouTube, listening it to on, on iTunes or wherever you're at, 
we love you. Hit the like, subscribe, and we will be back next week with another killer episode. Paul, thank you so much for being here and 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 for sharing. Just finally, if anyone wants to contact me directly, then they can. PaulBurgess.uk is the website. There's a button there. Press it. You can I'll link it up. Schedule a time in my diary, and we can chat about anything you like. I'm not bothered. I'm quite happy to talk about happy or health or whatever it is that you feel is important that you can't get to the bottom of right now. It's all free to chat. I haven't got a problem with that. And um, so if anyone does want to reach out, then feel free. But other than that, Mike, it's been a long while coming. And, yes, uh, I think yes, it was finally. It, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. But it was I, 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 thought, I thought a lot of good stuff came out. So uh, Amazing stuff. But it, but it all it's always that way when you and I get together. It's always that way. It's always that way. And I'm really looking forward to learning from you. I'm really, really looking forward to reinventing myself because this is a process that I'm going through. And it starts with this. It starts getting it starts with getting information for people uh, who are doing it, who have gone through it. And, uh, you know, I speak highly of you. I respect you and I'm grateful for you. I love you, brother. Thanks for for coming on. I'm excited already for next week. For those of you that are still listening, thanks for tuning in.